I'm really not a master of the mystic arts. I'll be honest with you. So guys, welcome back to RBR. You join me here at the brand new Porsche Center Reading, which is a HQ for Porsche in the UK. It's been completely redone into a whole new brand center. And I'm here today to collect my brand new Taycan. You saw me last time collect the Cross Turismo from the old center. I showed you as the work was being done as well. And now the center's complete. I did 25,000 miles in that time in my Cross Turismo, which was a huge amount because I absolutely love that car. Now I'm back for more. I'm back for a new Taycan, different shape, but similar car. Can't wait to show you. Let's check it out. Today's episode of RBR is once again sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that essentially protects you whatever you're doing online, whether you're accessing any of your data, emails, photos, making purchases, etc. It's something that keeps your location secret and it protects your data. Use case today, being at Porsche Center Reading, I'm gonna be using their Wi-Fi so I can upload the YouTube video as you'll see later. And behind the scenes, I will also be making the deposit payment for the car so I can actually drive away with the car. But you see, it's super easy for a malicious middleman to set up a Porsche guest Wi-Fi point in that area. And then imagine if I'm making my payment, accessing my private accounts, etc. That's it, that's my data gone immediately. But with Nord, it's one single click and you're protected. And they're going beyond VPN now with a new threat protection thing. So even if you're not using the VPN, it will protect you from malicious websites and trackers and stuff as well. And if you're leaving it on, don't worry because it's the fastest VPN app according to speed tests as well, which is great. And like I said, every device, iPhone, Mac, PC, Android, Android TV. Why do I say TV? Because it allows you to access content from all around the world rather than just your country. It's fantastic. So as always, the RBR code will give you a great deal. Use that or use the link below in order to avail that. So once again, that's the code RBR or go to nordvpn.com forward slash RBR and you can avail that offer below. Huge thanks to Nord for supporting this episode. Now let's head back to Porsche Reading and get this car. So guys, here it is, my brand new Taycan. It is of course still a wagon. It is the Sport Turismo. That's not initially what actually happened, okay? So I had the Cross Turismo 4S, absolutely loved it. You guys saw my ownership video, addicted to my Cross Turismo, I told you. And it was just the 4S. And we found it to be so fast, it was actually beating the GTS in launch control, which is crazy, but it was such a comfortable car. I love the off-road bits around it, I love the wagon style. Now, in between ownership, I drove the GTS Sport Turismo which was such a great looking car. You know, dynamically, it's a little bit better. It's a bit more interesting. I can get some content for you guys. I tried to first order one of those and they said, it's gonna be a year, a year and a half by the time that I asked them, which was crazy. We were looking at the following year in 2024. So I said, look, just forget that. What can you get me that's similar to this? And I specced up then another Cross Turismo 4S because I was so happy with it. It even got to the stage that I got the build picture sent to me on the My Porsche app, which is such a cool thing. So you can see I specced up this Neptune blue one, which looks stunning. It had like a blue fabric and black interior as well. So we got to the point where it's all painted and it's all done. And I get this call out of the blue from Porsche saying, we've got a Sport Turismo available. And me knowing that it was quite rare, I asked for the details and that's where this car came in. So I apologize for the long explanation, but that's how we find ourselves here today cancelled the Cross Turismo, accepted a Sport Turismo in a spec that I didn't do myself. So we've got a lot to explore and understand today. But before that, Porsche Center Reading has all been redone. This is the new style of Porsche Center that's gonna be pushed out across the UK and the world. So let's check out the brand new Center. Actually, before we walk in, I need to show you something really cool that's outside. Actually, no, wait, the new look outside is gonna look way better when we have the car with us. So let's do that later. Then as we come back in, here is your new Porsche Center. This here is what they call the runway. It's kind of a racetrack concept that is also a cool kind of lounge space. Hello, Davey. So each area is kind of like a pit lane where you'll have a car. So here we have the motorsport area, of course, with the uh, GT3 Cup car. On the back, you have a screen that normally has, you know, pretty videos and information. But yeah, this is just casually sitting here in Reading. Where else are you gonna see you know, a GT3 cup car. So that's your motorsport area. You've of course got new cars strung all around the dealership. It's a nice red Macan GTS there, guards red. And you can see you can fit a lot of new cars here in style. As we come back this way, this is your reception area, which doesn't look like it at all. It looks like, a, like someone's posh house. And at the back, my favorite place, 
which is where you get the coffee. Fresh brew. Why the long face, man? You didn't get a GT allocation either. It's all right, bro. Happens, happens to all of us. This is cool. You got the kids design studio section. If my little one was here, he'd be playing everywhere but here pretty much. He'd be like climbing inside the spider or something, but you know, it's the thought that counts. Um, bigger kids like me can play Forza here on the Xbox, which is cool. Then you've got the Porsche lifestyle section here. And if you feel like giving Porsche even more of your money, you can come here and get like umbrellas and glasses and shirts and soft toys and all this kind of stuff that's probably massively overpriced for the logo. I'm gonna get in trouble today. I'm being too flippant. Now some stuff is cool. Some stuff is cool. I actually picked up a keyring that matches the card. Never seen that before. That's got hands tooth keyring. Very clever. And you've got, oh, look at that. That's cool, isn't it? That, that's a salt and pepper thing for your, that's cool. I need to get one for the house. I must tell my wife. She'll quite like that. Then as you come past all the cool cars, you come to the future section, e-performance. Mercedes fans will already start vomiting. Sorry, I should give them the pre-warning. We hate that word. But this is the Porsche e-performance section, which is of course all about Taycan. So you'll invariably find an electric Porsche here. <laughs> then they've got two of these, which are called fitting lounges, which is basically where you can spec up your car. You've got all your different material finishes here. You know, leather, side sills, badges, knobs, knobs, and all the different things that you can think of, of course, paint finishes. And then that'll all be displayed on the screen here. And then allegedly you can also use VR to check your car out as well. So really pushing things into the future. Me, I've not been doing any of that here. I've been uploading the last video that's about to go live as far as, well, in the past here where, um, yeah. You know, the center is so cool. It's like even worth showing in the bathroom. What a cool and minimalistic toilet. I would never show the toilet anywhere else, but I'm doing it here because it's Porsche and they've spent money, your money. Then you come up to these lovely set of stairs and then out here you get the full view of the center. Let's go down. Let's pull the cover off my baby. Damn, it looks good. Here we go. Time for the unveil. And there is my Sport Turismo 4S finished in gentian blue. Yes, come for the 4S again. I'm still a believer that it's the absolute sweet spot in terms of performance. You know, you're looking at speeds close to E63 and M5, which is amazing. So because the Taycan was my best friend in this last year plus, we found a plate that said BFF. This kind of, yeah, I know, that's sad. Okay, it looks really great in gentian blue with the RS wheels and in that sportier wagon shape. I just think it looks gorgeous. Inside, I've got crayon and black, which is perfect alongside the blue. Now, of course, I've not spec this. So I'm gonna run you through all of the spec in terms of what are the options that you absolutely need to have? What are things that you don't need to have? Now to do that, let's take the car outside. I need to show you the outside of the center, which looks incredible. Then we'll take it home and check out the spec in a lot more detail and show you guys those renders of what I'm planning to do to the car. As we're coming out, love the sport electric sound. Sounds like Star Wars speeder just beginning to turn on and hum its way out. And now as the car comes out, you're gonna get that view of the center that I've been itching to show you. Check that out. Oh yes, I've saved the best bit for last. So this is the new look of all Porsche centers around the world going forward and really invokes the look of the rear of every Porsche. That's what I think they would try to invoke, even though that bloody light's not working. Still in progress, but that's really cool. Love it. Let's take it home. I've got lots more to talk to you about spec, how to spec your Taycan, what I learnt in those 12 plus months of owning the other one, and what I ended up in this one. Let's go home and check out the car properly. Right, so we're back home next day, key in hand, the car is home, and I thought we needed to talk a little bit more about spec because I owned a Taycan for 1.3 years and did 25,000 miles, as I said. So that gave me a really good idea of the things that I spec correctly and the things that I missed. 
So I want to run you through that as some buying advice, both external stuff, internal stuff as well. And then I want your advice on some ideas I have to customize this. And you're going to be able to vote about that as well. So stay tuned to see some renderings by me. So to begin, I think we have to talk about the original car that I spec'd. And the original car I spec'd wasn't this at all, because as I said, this was an in-stock car that I picked. It was actually a replacement CT, once again, across Turismo. And the reason I was doing that, because I couldn't get Sport Turismo, they were too rare. So I went with just a totally different spec. And having learned things on the first one, I learned the stuff, basically, that I missed having to make it a little bit more luxurious. So I went with the lovely Neptune Blue, which was the same color as the Turbo S Cross Turismo, the first ever one that we drove on the channel. Lovely shade. And then like a black and blue fabric style interior. I then added probably double the amount of options compared to what I originally spec'd in the white one. And these weren't necessary things. They're all unnecessary things, but stuff that just increased the luxuriousness or made the car look different enough to the last one. So it didn't, you know, didn't feel like I was basically going into the same car again. Um, stuff like Eno Drive and other luxurious things, you know, the interior, etc., etc. But then all that went out the window because I got a call, as I said, saying this ST was available and I went for it. So in terms of what I wanted versus what I ended up with, it's a bit of a mishmash, but it's actually a good opportunity to tell you guys, if you're looking for one that's in stock, what are the stuff that you really, really need and you can't live without? Because I had to retrofit some things in this. Let's talk about the exterior first. That's the best thing about getting the ST. Uh, alongside the driving dynamics, which is more like the saloon, as we will discover when I drive it. But it's having that wagon shape, but in the lower down stance than like our saloon, because um, the ST, like the saloon, sits lower than the Cross Turismo. You haven't got the off-roady bits around the arches, etc. It's, it's just a normal Taycan wagon that looks really sleek. Then it steals the best wheels from the GTS, which are the RS Spider style wheels. They're finished a little differently here, as you can see, but they look amazing on this car. So that's a big win as well. Then in terms of the options that I got along on this car, let's start talking about that now, and we'll start from the exterior. So I've got the tinted dynamic headlights, which actually look quite good because they're darker than the ones that I had previously. We've got the black roof rails as well, which helps with the wagon shape. And one thing I was pleased about is that this car still had the silver model badge on the back, which I, I did on the car that I spec'd as well. Stuff that I never would have bothered with that came with this though is like a gray tinted top of the windscreen. We've got a black painted rear wiper. It's like, why would you need that? Privacy glass, which I personally am not a fan of at all. And then a preparation for rear bike carrier as well, which again, not my thing really. So a bit of money, unfortunately wasted there, but that's how these things work, right? It was a bit of a lottery. But overall, I would say, a win in terms of the exterior look. It looks really, really good. Now, in terms of the changes that I was thinking of making, it was to add a bit more Porsche sport DNA into this. The first thing I was thinking was with the wheels, which as we know in GTS, they're a single satin color, which brings out some of the 3D shape of the wheel a bit more. But rather than just copying GTS, which I think would be unfair, I thought, why don't we do one of two finishes? Firstly, a satin silver or a glossy silver indeed, but just a flat silver much like you'd see in the GT product cars, or another GT product color, which is Weiss Gold, White Gold, if you like. And that might also really suit the blue quite well, but I'm, I'm a bit torn as to which one I think would look better, or whether just to leave it as is. Similarly, you could match that wheel color with some very simple official Porsche livery that you often get, but I'm torn. So I put some comments down below. I wanna hear from you guys. I will do a poll on my personal Instagram page of Rokanar as well. So keep an eye out for that. And then I will do exactly what you guys tell me to do on this because I don't trust myself on it. Now, we have to start talking about stuff that you absolutely need to get. It's a big topic and really important if you're ever gonna consider a Taycan either used or brand new. The first thing starts from the outside is you have to get Performance Battery Plus, okay? If you don't get Performance Battery Plus, you won't even get the minimum of 200 miles that I'm getting at the moment in the winter. In the summer, it's about 260, which is pretty good, but you'll get way less than that. So make sure if you're buying a used one or one that's in stock, that it has Performance Battery Plus. Luckily for Cross Turismo buyers, it comes standard, but every other 4S and down, you really need to look for that option, okay? Do not get a car without it. Now, this is a big topic, like I said, so we're gonna head inside. All the other options are inside the car and we'll run you through everything I had as well. So guys, I'm really quite loving the Crayon interior. Like I said, this was one that I wasn't allowed to spec by my wife because she's gonna be the main user of this car, right? And she was like, no, it's gonna be Crayon. It's gonna be hard to keep clean. I was like, fine, we'll get something dark and boring. 
but luckily because the ST only had crayon it was a win for us so we get a much more luxurious looking leather interior which yeah I'll have to keep clean but I'll find a way to do it there's some good products out there right so I'm going to split this section up on specking the car into two sections stuff you cannot do without in my opinion and secondly things that I didn't have before that I've either got now or wanted to test this time so first of all let's start with one of the most important ones which is chrono package sports chrono package is a small cost considering the fact that when it comes to resale it's going to mean a lot because everybody's going to be looking for it you get the drive select unit here so that's something that most buyers are really going to be looking for so make sure you do get that the second thing that i think is fatal on a Taycan for me personally if it doesn't have it is the four plus one seating what four plus one means is basically it's a five seat rear bench with three seat belts if you don't get the four plus one you will only have two seat belts and two seats in the back okay and that is going to be a big deal breaker for a lot of people so again if you're buying a used one make sure you look for that in there next if you can get a car with it do get the Bose surround system because it's actually a very good sound system okay and alongside that also get the ambient lighting because a it adds some nice interior flair here so I can add the blue color within my blue car which is nice or you can choose for example the dynamic one which then changes the color based on your album art on the music that you're listening to which is so cool the next ultra important one is our pan roof Again, for our interior occupants, particularly everybody in the back, it really opens up the interior of the Taycan, lets in loads of light. So again, while it's not super, super necessary, I personally would be looking for it in the car. So that is another one to really look out for. Then another one that I think you just can't do without in any EV these days is getting seat heating and steering wheel heating. Because to not take advantage of the preheat functions, particularly in the winter, it's like minus seven these days in the UK, right? And my Taycan is 22 degrees when I get in the car in the morning because it has the ability to preheat the seats and the steering wheel. And you can all do it within the Porsche app, very clever timer system. You can choose which seat is heated, etc., what heat level you get to, what time of the day, and set different schedules. And it's brilliant. Like, I miss that so much in my combustion cars. So you, you need to make sure that you get that. Now, some things that I don't have in my car that I really, really miss and that you need to get if you get one yourself. The first is 360 degree camera. This is a big car, okay? And it's something that my wife's unhappy about as well. You can't see where the wheels are. You're more likely to, you know, perhaps curb things or not be able to maneuver as well. So 360 camera is a big loss for me, but make sure that you guys get it. The other thing that this car didn't have was Porsche electric sound. And you guys know how much I love Porsche electric sound because it adds that Star Wars speeder you know sound to the vehicle if you want it but luckily porsche do allow you to retrofit this it is a equipment thing that you can find on their website it cost me circa 1500 pounds which i know is dear versus the three four hundred pound option cost but for me i wouldn't even have bought the car if it didn't had it so luckily porsche reading did all of that behind the scenes before delivery all done and dusted seven hours apparently to get it all done probably because of speakers and and, uh, and everything but that was done now things that i did not spec which I've got in this car that I'm actually quite excited to test. Then I'll feed back to you guys when I do the main review of this car, which won't be too far away. The first one is comfort access, which is when you have the key in your pocket and you're approaching the car, the door handles of the car will unlock and the car will unlock generally, and then you can get in. So it's called comfort access. Again, it's the touch system as well. So you can touch the handle to open the car, touch the handle to close the car, and then you get remote boot closing. You get the ability to open the boot with a swipe of the foot gesture, and you can open the front bonnet with the swipe of the hand like I showed you on the 911 reviews as well. So that is actually, I think, I think I've been missing that in my Taycan, so I'm happy to kind of live with that and see what that's like. The other one I've got on here is heads up display. Um, it's not something that I spec on my second car. I still don't think I need it. It's a nice like luxury item to be there, but you know, very easily turn offable here with the shortcut button as well. Let's see how it works out, right? It, it'll be interesting. One that's more interesting for me is Power Steering Plus, and I've already felt the effects of this. What that does is essentially make your steering maneuvers a bit lighter in lower speed. So, you know, when you're reversing around and parking, et cetera, et cetera. And it's actually quite nice from what I've experienced already. So I'll feed back to you what that is like when the main review comes. The other thing that's in here is an ionizer, which I'm never going to use. Um, one thing I'm really happy about, though, is getting the 14-way comfort seats which again, last time I missed, the standard, standard seats took a long time to break in and they were always squeaky. And I just wasn't happy about that. These, comfortable from day one. 
so they're brilliant in that regard. They've also put the Porsche Crest, which is an additional option. Again, something I wouldn't do, but when you have it, you know, it's actually quite nice. So then this little thing, which is the smokers package. And all it gives you is this little ashtray type holder. I, ne I don't smoke and I would never smoke in a car. I think that's completely haram. Uh, but yeah, this we've been using as a bin basically to throw in rubbish so it doesn't accumulate in the rest of the car. And look, it's got a nice Porsche kind of, you know, Porsche design everything nice, don't they? Even ashtrays. And then finally out there, we've got the LED entry lights, which say Porsche. Um, again, something I just wouldn't spec, but it's a nice luxury to have there if you need it. Now, much more important than that is an option that I spec'd on my newer car as well that I was hoping this has, and it does. And that's called active cruise control, which is the radar assisted cruise control. But I wanted to go a level beyond this. I wanted Porsche Eno Drive, which is essentially assisted self-driving. You turn it on, the car will steer for you when on motorways and brake for you, etc. And you, you know, you get a bit of a reprieve on longer journeys. But this doesn't have Eno Drive, it only has active cruise control. But the story doesn't end there because there is something called function on demand with Porsche. So what you can actually do, it's, it's in-app it's in purchases, in-car purchases, right? So you've heard BMW selling like the, the seat heating for a subscription, or Mercedes selling the rear wheel steering when it's already in the EQS. It's not as bad of a use case scenario in this. In fact, actually, it's benefiting me financially, because if I went for Eno Drive, I'd be paying over a thousand pounds initially to spec it on the car. Whereas now I can go to the function on demand service when I log into the Porsche website, I choose Eno Drive and the lane assist, and I can instead pay, well, either I can pay uh, a one-off payment to have it forever for the life of the car, or I can pay a subscription service for the time that I'm using it. I also get the first three months free, and after that I pay, I think, 36 pounds a month. And considering the fact, as you guys know, I, I run through my cars like you run through Hot Meals, in the 12 months that I'll probably have this car, three months will be free, and I'll only pay a small percentage of that overall Eno Drive cost, so that's brilliant. And it's really easy to, to set up as well, so you pay for it online, you get a notification here in the main system that says the function on demand is ready to install, so you go into your notifications, and it will tell you then to turn the car off and leave it for 10 minutes. You come back, and as you can see, there I've got Porsche Eno Drive already, the lane assist already. That's brilliant, and I'm so, so happy about that. A, I'm happy that initially I wasn't sure whether I could have Eno Drive, but B, the fact that I'm making a cost saving on it, rather than you know plonking out a large amount of money for, for that option, means that this is one time when function on demand or a in-car purchase actually really makes sense to me. Now there is one final thing I wanna to add to this car because of how mucky and cold and horrible it is. Let me show you that now. Right guys, so here is that option that I was talking about that I wanted to add, and it's basically Porsche winter mats, right? All weather floor mats, because it's so mucky out here these days. Case in point, it's only about a week old, this poor thing. Look at the state of the E63 since I picked it up. All the road salt and the winter muck. Yes, I know what you're gonna say, it still looks bloody cool, Raz, which I absolutely do agree with you. It looks fantastic, but you know, Come on, I don't want, on, want that on the interior of my brand new Taycan. So let's install the all-weather mats inside the car. So here's what they look like unpacked. That is very smart. It's gonna be one of the smartest all-weather mats in the world, right? Not only have you got a Porsche silhouette, it is a Taycan silhouette on there as well. I like that. Right, so let's pull these off. They're already starting to get a little bit mucky. And there we go, all installed. It's actually a really nice tight fit as well. So it really abuts against all of the edges there to stop any dirt or anything at all getting through to the bottom carpet. So very happy with that. That will help keep this part of the car nice and clean in the winter. So guys, that's my Sport Turismo. Really excited to live with it. I still think the 4S is the sweet spot, equivalent to you know your M5s and E63s. It's been a brilliant car for me. So what's coming up next is going to be a full review on the Sport Turismo 4S, what it's like living with it versus the Cross, and indeed, how does it fare up against a similarly shaped and similarly practical E63 S wagon? I think that's going to be a really interesting comparison between them. So look forward to that. And if you've enjoyed this collection video, as always, please do like and subscribe to RBR. And I'll see you guys next time.